Hello beautiful teacher and welcome to this week's Vibrant Music Teacher Chat. This is the weekly show on YouTube where we talk about the latest goings on in the music teaching industry, special music teaching topics, and we do a warm up together as a community. Before we get to our warm up today, I want to give you quick little pieces of information for members of Vibrant Music Teaching. So there is a new masterclass up. I recorded it earlier today. So if you were live with me, that's great. If it's too early for you, don't worry. It's already in the training library. There will be an edited version up soon, but it's only a couple of edits. So if you want to watch it right away, you absolutely can. It's already in the training library. Um, and it should be a fun one for you to watch if you have any interest in students doing exams, the pros and cons of them, how to prepare students for them and how to decide if a student is even ready to do an exam before you start any of the preparation process. It will save you so many headaches if you ever do exams with your students, I promise you that. I also wanted to let you all know that our um, 2022 send off is coming soon. So this is a little tradition we started two years ago now. This will be the third year that we're going to have what is basically like an advent calendar for the month of December, or almost the month of December up until Christmas on the site. So if you love that last year, don't worry, it is coming again this year. It's going to start on December 1st and you can watch our Instagram or Facebook to see the link to that and the daily reminder to go check it out. The way it works is that there's a different door for each day. Sometimes there's a prize drawing behind the door. Sometimes there's a new resource or article or freebie. Um, sometimes there's silly little surprises from me, all sorts of fun goodies, and they disappear after a day. So don't try and get muddled up in the time zones. Just check it at approximately the same time for you every day, and then you'll get every one. It doesn't matter whether it's the correct day or not. Does that make sense? Because they change based on midnight GMT, which is my time zone. So yes, I hope that you're looking forward to that. People have really enjoyed it the last two years. So we're doing that again for you this year. Now, with those pieces of news and notices out of the way, we're going to go ahead with our warm up. Getting started with Sulfa. So, we're going to start with our Sulfa today, and it does start on so, one of my favorite words. So, when I do this with students, I go through first and just say the Sulfa names and then sing them together with the slow track and then sing them together with the quicker track. Once students have gotten used to that, we sight sing them together, but initially I allow them just to talk. So try it that way with me. So, la, so, me, re, me, so, me, re, do. So that's the initial way I would do it. Ooh, <laughs> that was so funny. I, I went on to the next slide by mistake. And then I looked at it and I was like, did I just get all those notes wrong? Because it said la there on the G. And I was like, what? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, that was a fun moment. So we go through it like that speaking. Then I, without saying anything about it, I transition to saying it together, but in the rhythm. And then I start singing it and just hope they'll sight sing along. And then we try it with the backing track. So that, I mean that over several months of lessons of doing these. I absolutely love doing these in my lessons, especially buddy lessons. So we'll try it together. Let's try it with the fast track. I'm going to challenge you. Okay, so give it a go. I won't sing along because it'll throw you off, but give it a go. Sing along in salsa, in do to do to do, in la 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 la, whatever you prefer. I often do jazz hands during that little broken chord at the end. I can't help it. Okay, I hope you gave that a go. We're going to go ahead with our rhythm warm up next. These, if you haven't seen these before, by the way, these are Sulfa Railroad and Rhythm Railroad. You can find them in the Vibrant Music Teaching Library if you are a member. Now, this is Rhythm Railroad. Let's practice this um, while saying the Kadai syllables first, or my version of the Kadai syllables. So it goes ta, ta, ta. What? 
ta 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 one two. Let's try that again. Ta 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 tum ti ta tum ti ta ta two three. Ta 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 tum ti 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 tum ti ta ta two three. Okay, so I practice them like that with students or with counting, or I make them do it by themselves if they've been doing them for a while. And then we try it with the slow or the fast. Again, if they have a bit of experience, I tend to give them the choice. And most students, some are more cautious and go for the boat. Most of my students go straight for the plane if I give them the choice. And then if they can't do it in time with the plane, I make them do it with the boat. Let's try it with the plane together. I love using these so much. I hope you're still enjoying doing this warm up with me and that you did it along with me. If you didn't, come back next week and do it with us that time because it's a really good way to get your brain up and running, especially if it's earlier when you watch this show. I have been doing these with um, most of my students for ages, but one student hadn't been doing them a lot with me. And this year he's in buddy lessons. And so he's been doing them and he was kind of reluctant at first and now he's getting much better and really enjoying the rhythm ones and even getting involved in the singing ones, which he's quite reluctant with before. So I just wanted to give you that encouragement. If you have a student who's a little bit dragging their feet with this or any other game or singing thing or whatever, do persist. They will come around <laughs> and they'll have fun with it. It just has to get a bit easier sometimes first. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through how I use lead sheets to teach Christmas songs. Um, in particular, these are Christmas songs. You could use this for any holiday music. You could also use it for any pop music you want to teach. But I have a particular set inside Vibrant Music Teaching, which is called Chroma Christmas. So if you are a member, there's a link in the description where you can open the Chroma Christmas sheets. That's what I'm going to pull up on the screen in just a second here. And these are in the colors of the boom whackers. Do you know boom whackers? Which also the bells come in the same show colors, the little desk bells. Um, I didn't bring those out with me because the teacher um, who's teaching right now <laughs> in my second teaching room in my house um, he will probably need the bells today, so I didn't bring them out. But yeah, there's little colored bells. I'm sure you might have seen them. Um, or boom whackers have the same colors. So those are great to have on hand to practice these and to do these as group ensembles. Right now, though, we're going to talk as if we're doing them as um, a, in a solo lesson, because I know that's the context many of you are teaching in. So I'll show you how the PDF looks and how I would use it to teach. So this is the actual PDF. This is Chroma Christmas. It comes with the instruction sheet first, as they all do. And it has a few different Christmas songs. So this is Jingle Bells and it comes without the um, chords, that's what those are called, <laughs> written on top and with them. And there's a few different versions. So this one's going to look confusing. It's on its side. This is for a bigger stretched out version for using with groups. Um, and a really big version so that you can use it with bigger groups. So that's what that looks like. And then we have We Three Kings, same kind of format, obviously a little bit more challenging to play for most students with the chords above and everything is colored according to those chroma colors. So you don't have to use those. Um, like you don't have to use the boom whackers or the bells, it's totally fine. But it is a great equalizer. So if you have students who without, with, even with you teaching it to them by rote, would kind of struggle with some of the Christmas pieces because of their range, then this can be a great tool to use as well. So this sits on top of the piano keys and it is available on that same page as Chroma Christmas. There's a, a walkthrough of how to create it and uh, the actual download for this. So this literally goes on the piano keys. It kind of slots in. 
if I can show you difficult without a piano but it kind of bends there so it bends that way and then it'll sit between the black keys anyway so that's how that works and it can be a great one for preschoolers students who've just started people like that who want to play Christmas music but if you're not using the colors that doesn't matter you can still read these pieces I mean just don't use the colors right the colors are irrelevant so what if your student can read the music, that's not a problem. And it does just make it that a little bit easier for many students to read. So um, let's take We Three Kings. Or was it the next one? No. Yeah, let's take Jingle Bells. We'll go back to the start. So you can do this with anything, as I said, any lead sheet, holiday piece, whatever, I'm just using this as an example. So the way I would teach this is the first step I would actually give students is the root note of the chord, not the melody, not the chord, but just the root note. And even if a student is a little bit further along, I would often do this. So if they have played a lot of lead sheets, of course, just like don't hold them back. But for students who haven't played a lot of lead sheets, even if they can read this fairly handily, I like to do these steps first. So I'd have them play, oh my dinky keyboard went off, there we go. So I'd have them play it first and they play the root note of the chords and I play the melody and we both sing. So I would be the right hand in this case doing the jingle bells and they would be the left hand doing just the root note and holding it. Sorry. Um, so you get the idea. I know that's a little bit on the quiet side. I don't have a MIDI input or anything today, but hopefully you can hear it okay. So they would be playing just the root note. We do that a few times till they get used to it. If you have a student that struggles with that stage, I would do both hands like I just did actually, and have them double up the root note an octave lower. So they're doing the left hand like down there at the bottom of my dinky keyboard. I'd be doing it here and I'd be doing the melody there, okay? Um, and then once they get used to how we're holding the notes down and just kind of following the pacing of it rather than there being note values as we would have in regular sheet music, then they would be able to play the root in the left while you do the melody. Then they can try doing the melody while you do the root and then maybe doing both of those together. Maybe one of the previous stages is as far as your student gets for now. If they're quite beginner, like the coordination is going to be quite a lot there. So I would just have them do the root notes while you sing for maybe a few weeks. But if they are able to do those together, then the next step would be to have them do the open fifth or thirds in the left hand. Now, reason for not the chord is purely technique right it's purely coordination wise so if your student can play a chord you can go straight to that but if they maybe haven't encountered chords before or they're on the younger side open fifth or thirds works great and then they can either just reach up to the F or they could move the open fifth Either way, I would stick with root position chords. So even if they're doing the full chords, they're going to stick with the root position. For now, I tell them to ignore the seven. So there's a D7 there. Just ignore it. Just pretend it just says D for now. Okay, and then you can add the seven in later. Um, so I want them to really kind of understand what they're doing. So rather than just telling them, oh, D7 is that one. By the way, I'm playing C, D, F sharp there. Rather than just telling them it's that, I mean, that's kind of a lie. That's a version of T7. But I have had students come to me, actually I had an adult student a few years ago, who, it wasn't that, it was G7, I think. And even regular chords, like she just thought G was second inversion G because she'd been taught on an organ or something. And like, she just had one inversion of each chord that happened to be all in the same area. And that was how she was taught. It was really interesting, but it just kind of distort your view of what a chord is. So I prefer a root position, then get to the inversions later. So the final stage, if 
they get that far. So they're playing the root position chords. That's fine. Final stage of the version with the melody as well in the right hand would be to try, start to invert the chords. Okay. So what I prefer rather than talking in, okay, should we play the first inversion of F, the second inversion of F or the root position? I prefer to just think of it like this. I get my student to play the C chord. I get them to freeze. Freeze there, C chord down. And I say, okay, without moving, can you tell me what notes are in F major chord? Maybe they can tell me, maybe they have to play the F major with their right hand to check. And then they tell me, okay, it's F, A, and C. I say, okay, great. Which one of those are you playing? So I've given them a hint, it's one of them. <laughs> Which one of those are you playing? C. Okay, so don't move your fifth finger on C. That's not allowed to move. Where's the closest place you could play the F and the C? A, excuse me. And then they come to an F major second inversion. Does that make sense? Let me know if you're following me. I know I don't have a piano view today, so it might be a bit confusing. But that's the way I talk about inversions in terms of lead sheets. Rather than really going through inversions, they just get the idea that you can play notes of a chord in a different order and it still counts as a chord. And so we're just going to make our hand as lazy as possible. We're going to play the notes in the closest possible place. Does that make sense? If my student is fine with all of that, there is one more activity that I like to do with these. And I like to get, or sometimes even if they don't quite get to the inversion stage, I still like to do this extra activity, which is to have them play the root note in the left and the chord in the right. So it would be like... It doesn't have to be that fast, but you get the idea. So they can do inversions again with the chords or they can do them in root position. But if we get them to play that, or even with some kind of a simple pattern like... Yeah? Some kind of a simple pattern or just hands together and holding the chord. And then both of you sing along you can try and plant the seeds of the idea that they could do a sing-along at home, right? They could be the accompanist. They don't have to play the melody. These are songs that people know. And I think that is a great opportunity of the holidays, of this time of year, is people are a bit more willing to sing. Am I right? <laughs> it's one time of year when, you know, more people are happy to sing along with things. Not saying people aren't happy to do that the rest of the year at all, but, you know, a lot of people don't sing for most of the year, and then at Christmas they do. So, if we can get our students to be an accompanist for a holiday party, for a family gathering, I think that is a great opportunity. So do ask your students if there are songs that their family would know. You know, maybe it is a traditional song from their background, if their parents are from another country, or their grandparents are. Maybe there's a traditional song that they sing that you've never heard of. But most of these things are pretty simple. So you can look it up together, find the chords, teach them how to play them, and they can have a sing-along together, which I love. Um, or maybe it's not, you know, a Christmassy, Hanukkah, anything song like that. In my family, honestly, it would be the Beatles that I should be teaching if it was a child who was in my family, which there aren't. Um, there's no piano-playing child in my family. But if there was... I would want to teach them the Beatles and like, yeah, sort of 80s classics and stuff because that's what my family would sing. So try and wheedle some answers out of your kids if you can and teach them this same way. You can look up the chord charts for so many songs without the melody, just the chords and the lyrics on Ultimate Guitar and just like have at it practice chords. It is so much fun. If you are a member, by the way, you might have recently seen my masterclass, which was about teen retention. And I talked about jam band that I do with my students, which is based on playing from these chord charts and playing pop songs and songs that they know and just playing along with a track. And it could equally be done playing along with a group of singers. So I hope that gives you a flavour of how I teach lead sheets. We have a lot more resources on this for members that are watching. We have two whole courses. So there's um, a beginner sort of level and then there's an, a next level up. Um, 
It's actually called Lead Sheet Level Up, which is why I rolled my eyes at myself. I didn't mean to say it that way. But there is a next level course as well. So when your students have gotten a bit more comfortable with lead sheets, they can go to that next level. But for this kind of context with the holiday lead sheets, I think it's so fun just to get them started, even if it's just that root note in the left and the melody in the right or just singing along. I think it's a great way to use holiday music in your studio. I wanted to give you a heads up as well. Quickly for members who are watching, I had two other Christmassy things. So first of all, Christmas star songs for your preschoolers, your mini musicians. We do have this little collection of a few Christmas songs in the star song format, which is like this. So laid out in the same way we do all the star songs in mini musicians. Sometimes people are looking for this and they don't know where it is. It doesn't live on a separate page, it's with the Mini Musicians course. So that's where you need to go. Again, the link is in the description. And a little teaser of something that's coming up on the 1st of December. On the 1st of December, we are releasing, as always, five new resources into the Downloadables Library, the Printables Library, and this is one of them. It's called Jingle Genie. It's coming out December 1st, so it's like seven, eight days now. And um, it's one of our flip book style resources. So they look like this. Whoops. Hard to hold up, but perfect on a music stand. And you get to change Rudolph's head and antlers to different styles. And then you get a corresponding opposite page to piece together different versions of Jingle Bells jingly jingly sounding jingle bells <laughs> i hope you'll look forward to that one now if any of you have any special questions today i'm happy to stay to answer them just type the word question followed by your question and we will go into the ama section so do let me know if you have any okay i've got some autumn leaves as it's thanksgiving week here um here. It's not Thanksgiving week here, but it is Thanksgiving week, so I have some autumn leaves coming down my screen for you. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm just going to check through the chat here for some things I missed as well. Um, Thank you, Bethan. I, I missed that for earlier. Nice. Um, Juliet, I'm so glad to hear it. First time ever entering students for exams. Oh my gosh. I hope as long as they're at the right level, it's going to be a great experience. Honestly, it can be really rewarding. Just don't let the stress fall on you if they're not preparing. Make sure you get in touch with the parents, get them on board, make sure the practice in is in place and you will do great. Um Rachel asked, "Have you watched <laughs> It's a very serious question. Uh yeah, I have actually. It was, it was quite a while ago. It's been out for quite a while, yeah? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's not, or maybe not obviously, I don't know why I said it like that. It's not my part of Ireland. If you're not aware of the geography of Ireland, it is a small island, but half of it is, not half, six counties are Northern Ireland and Derry is one of those. So it's not in the Republic um, and it's like, it's part of the UK. So it's some of the, some of the things ring true for Ireland, but the accents around me are not the same as Terry Girls. Does that make sense? Anyway, it's a funny show. Um, yeah, I'd be curious if anyone else had watched it and enjoyed it. It was quite popular around here, obviously, being that it was localish. <laughs> Happy Mr. Nicholas' birthday. You know what? He would love to be called that. Um, he wouldn't even think that's a slight. And why should he? God, these eyes and this uh, filter are pretty bizarre, aren't they? Okay, I shouldn't make that face. It's probably pretty scary looking. Carrie, you should get some. They are really fun. Um, well, I'm going to say you should get some if you do groups. With just solo, it's not as fun. Because you, like... Yeah, they really come into their own for group workshops. I think if you're doing a group workshop soon or that kind of get together, piano party, that kind of thing, great excuse to invest in some. If not, I'm not sure you'll get the use out of them because I tend to pull them out for groups. 
Okay, thank you all so much for joining me. It's been a blast as always. I hope you enjoyed it and it gave you some ideas for using lead sheets. We will be back again next week. Just checking the topics. Oh yes, totally different topic. Working with students who hate corrections. If you have any of those, you'll know what I'm talking about. Students who resist any kind of correction. How can we work with them? How can we deal with that? Um, we're going to be going through that. And then I have two spots left in the year before we wrap up for our holiday break. So if there's any other topics you want us to cover here on the show, do let me know. Just message me or email me and let me know um, what you'd like to see here on the show. And I hope to see you back here next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you.